Star Citizen Trade, Transport and Cargo. With the release of the Hull series, I thought we should talk about trade and transportation in the verse. Trade in the verse will be as simple as taking a good from A to B. You'll be able to buy and acquire goods from one system and take them to another, and their values will be different in each system based on that system's wants and needs. But the basics of trading are, I get goods at a low cost and sell them for a profit. Simple, right? Well, there is a little bit more to think about if you want to be a pro trader or if you want to make the most amount of credits you can. And why wouldn't you? If you're going to be doing transportation runs, you might as well be making the biggest amount of profit you can. You could be obtaining credits from both players or NPCs in private trades, selling directly to a station or a planet or as part of a mission. There will be buy and sell orders too, so a lot of the maths may be already worked out and available for you just to browse. The Star Citizen universe will have a living, breathing economy, affected by missions, player actions, NPCs and wants and needs. Systems that keep having trade routes plundered might desperately require food or base metals, um, as well as manufactured goods like weapons to help defend themselves, whereas safer systems that are enjoying growth, protection, uh, may desperately afford and want luxury goods, but base metals might be near worthless to them. But may be cheap to purchase for the shrewd trader. Making money from trade is as easy as identifying where you will make money from purchasing then selling the goods for profit. But making lots of money, lots of credits, will require you to do something a bit different. You could carry large loads, you could predict future system needs, um, affect the supply and demand chain, or even hoard goods to sell them in the future. And that's it. Trade is an information game. You will have a certain amount of facts and variables available to you. You know your ship, you know its cargo capacity, and we'll come on to that a bit later where we actually go across all of the ship's different cargo capacities. Uh, you'll know your ship's defenses and speed and what kind of level of pilot you are. You'll also know the value and types of goods. You can find out how much one good is worth in one system and how much it is worth in another. You can browse on your, um, on your, uh, beep, 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 beep. Moby glass, that's it, on your Moby glass. You can browse on your Moby glass or uh, through spreadsheets or whatever and you can find out how much um, goods are from one system to another and then you can work out your trade route. Um, also, you can find out how much space that cargo takes up per unit in your cargo hall. Past sales and history, you'll have access to how much goods have sold for in other systems at other times. So with a bit of research, you could probably work out what's affected the price, wh why has a good become quite valuable for, for this time, uh, and why has it dipped uh, another time. Time and risk reward. So you can choose the length and the route that you travel in the verse. Time is quite literally money in trading. Is it worth moving small profit goods a tiny distance and just keep on doing that, or high value goods a huge distance? You're gonna have to take out your calculator and literally work it out. What makes you more money? Also, the risk reward. Some routes will gonna be dangerous, some are gonna, um, Goods are going to be illegal to carry uh, and are going to have to be smuggled through some systems. There could be pilots, police, players, customs. All of these could affect your bottom line. Now, is it worth totally rerouting around to go around dangerous systems? Well, I mean, it might be, but it might not be. You're going to have to do a bit of a risk reward in your head and literally go, well, it's going to take me half an hour extra, then it's not worth it. So sod it, smash through the dangerous system or just... Try to take something that's not illegal. Try to take something that's not dangerous or non-dangerous route. Costs and overheads. Do you need to hire an escort? Are there taxes, custom fees, toll fees that you need to take into account? If you lose your cargo or ship, is it insured? Would it be safer doing trades um, in a different system? Do I need more crew? Costs, 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 costs. I'm a trader in a lot of games I play, and I'm relatively good at work working out profits, risk and reward, uh, and timings and stuff like that. Uh, and with trading, it's definitely worth putting in the extra effort to make more money. If you don't want to, then it might be worth doing a different industry job or, or even going full combat. So maybe go mining, maybe go into combat, maybe go bounty hunting, if you don't want to put the extra effort into trading. Now, what sort of trade can we do? What sort of ships are there? We're going to have a look at the Cargo Master List. This is a spreadsheet taken from the latest CIG um, released information on actual SCU for each ship. 
SCU being standard cargo units. SCU defines the exterior dimensions of containers, which allows you to work out how many boxes you can put in your cargo hold. So minor traders, these are ships that have very small cargo capacities, basically less than 20 SCU. Um, I also expect that even ships with a zero ca uh, capacity for cargo size will be able to attach some form of small container for cargo, um, but we'll have to see that in the future. So minor traders would be stuff like the, um, the 300i, the 325a, the 315p, the Mustang series, the Avenger, um, the uh, Hornet, uh, or any Hornet with a store box, uh, and most of the Auroras, pretty much all the Auroras other than the CL. So these are small cargo hold traders. Fine if you're just starting out in the verse, but I would expect you would have to trade in small, extremely high value items like weapons uh, or ship components or modules, literally taking one or two of them from one planet to another for a few credits. Maybe even outfit your ship with modules you want to sell and use it as like a, a cargo mule um, as well on its module slots. Um, so you can literally ferry more from one system to another. Another. If you're serious about trade though, you will want to get a new ship for trading. Small traders. So these are ships that have a small dedicated cargo capacity um, a, a couple of times at least more than the minor traders. So we're looking at ships like the uh, Aurora CL, uh, the Redeemer, the Drake Cutlass, uh, the Hull A and the Freelancer series, excluding the Freelancer Max. These ships only have small cargo bays, but they're going to be quite quick at transporting. Also, they might be good at evading uh, and fighting too. In these ships, again, I would expect high value goods as you only have a small uh, cargo capacity, but you could make much better profit compared to the minor traders. You could also consider much longer trips too, and you might start to factor risk into the equation that you might be able to get a lot further, you might be able to smuggle stuff across. With this sort of ship, maybe finding somewhere that desperately needs a particular uh, few different types of module, uh, a VIP or person of value, or something like that, that the smaller traders are going to be quite good at. Also, it's hopefully much less likely that players will consider you hauling cargo and may leave you alone and not pirate you, though the Hull A and Freelancer will still likely attract some attention. Medium traders. This is ships that I consider have a bigger cargo capacity or the modularity to be fitted um, for better transportation and cargo, um, a lot more so at least than the previous ships we've mentioned. Um, that sort of ships like the Freelancer Max, the Retaliator, uh, the Constellation series, um, the Jump um, 890, uh, the Miss Cull B, uh, the Caterpillar and the Carrack. I mean the Carrack, Carrack can take quite a lot of cargo, um, but it mean it's more suited to exploration, but I mean if you, want to, if you wanted to take it for a cargo run, you can. You're going to start to make some good profit on each haul here. Most of these ships can defend themselves pretty well too. I would expect a cargo of medium to high value goods, or with a markup on them, with a good markup on them. Each of these hauls isn't going to be that risky either, though some pirates with small and medium cargo holds themselves might see you as a juicy target. Again, I would expect... Um, Stuff that you'd be transporting like CPUs, um, small to medium sized manufactured goods, and munitions, that sort of stuff to be commonly transported in this range. A lot of traders and transporters might prefer this range too, um, especially if they're solo. They can comfortably be run by a single person, thus maximising profit from a share point of view. Also, these ships are pretty quick and should be able to run multiple transport runs pretty quickly. Big and specialised traders. So this is ships like the Starfarer, the Hull Sea, the Banu Merchantman, uh, the Reclaimer in its raw capacity, and the Orion in its ore capacity. Big traders are where you can make some big cash, but they are very juicy, delicious targets for pirates and other players generally just trying to troll you. And they require real thought and planning to maximise your income. They may require multiple people to be involved in various processes to get the most out of your cargo. They might have some uh, ideas of manufacturing where you take one good to another, get it manufactured, and then take those manufactured goods to another planet. I mean, you might get that across the range, but this is where you're going to start to make a lot of money from doing that. The Hull Sea and Merchantman will be able to carry large quantities of pretty much anything, mainly limited to the amount of money you want to invest into each shipment of goods. 
The staff area is going to be a bit more specialised, suited to carrying liquids like fuel, as well as collecting that fuel as well. But I would assume there is multiple qualities of fuel, fuel and different types that the staff area can carry. So you'd need to work out where the best place to buy, sell, gather that fuel from, uh, and then deposit it. What, what are you going to do with that fuel? Again, the Orion and the Reclaimer, those suited to different industry roles, could be quite effective as large transports as well. They only have an SCU of 2 to 300 each, but they have a raw storage unit for ore, in the case of the Orion, and salvage, in the case of the Reclaimer. And those particular bays have massive storage for that particular type of cargo. With these sorts of cargo size, you need to research all the goods available to you. Though I expect it's possible to run a trade and transport op with just one person with these ships, I would expect terrible things to occasionally happen, and there's going to be a lot going on, so it may well be worth getting some help in. This is the level where you're going to start to need escorts too, or at least consider them. If I was a pirate, this would be my most delicious kind of prey. I'd love to see this sort of ship in the verse as a pirate. Dedicated traders with large cargo holds, probably with quite high value goods, but not so much capacity that I'd have to do a hundred runs with me and my pirate buddies to collect all the goods from their hull and their death bodies and stuff. I don't want I don't want to be like a load of sand scattered out in space and go, what am I going to do with this? Ugh. The items inside are likely to be of a medium value range, so it's a good risk reward for a pilot. But if you want to be a career trader and transporter, then I'd say the big traders are probably for you. Super haul. So the super haulers, you have so much cargo space that you can shift sand, dirt, water, and probably still make quite a good profit. But if you had enough investment, you could make incredibly huge amounts of income. Your ship, however, is slow and vulnerable. These are also the sort of ships that you're going to be able to sell banner ads on. I mean, I'm not sure how that system's going to work in the game yet, but we saw some uh, concept pictures of adverts for, like Star Marine on the sides of ships. I think you might be able to actually sell some advertising space on ships, of, especially of this size. They're huge! These ships need escorts to be able to trade effectively and without having panicked crew constantly. And also, they need crew to help operate. Orgs will be using this type of ship to move bases, um, fleets, mass uh, ammunition. Um, the Hull E comes with a warning as well that basically it will require a lot of investment and protection. But I feel that this should also be given with the Hull D really. If you're in a group and you want to do transport and trade, you might consider getting a Hull D for you and your group. If you're in a large organisation with other enthusiasts, you may consider a Hull E, but you can't really use it to its full potential when starting in the verse. What are you going to do with it? You haven't got enough money to be able to do something big with it. You might as well start with a Hull D or a Hull C. These are truly massive ships. That being said, you may be able to make some genuinely large profits just hauling stuff from safe systems, literally from one system to another. There might only be a fractional markup on an item you're delivering, but you're going to be delivering so much of that item, like sand or dirt or whatever, and um, maybe, maybe something like arable produce or whatever, or meat. Um, so that sort of stuff. And you might be able to make a significant profit on that just because of how much you're able to shift. So let's talk a little bit about the cargo system and some of the interesting notes. Uh, the modular nature of the Star Citizen ships and cargo system means that the cargo boxes will be able to be fittable across pretty much all ships as long as they've got the correct plugs and ports. So you could grab a storal box from an Aurora and put it on your hull B or vice versa or put loads of those storal boxes on the Hull C. The example that CIG currently give is that all cargo attach points are standardised across Aurora's all the way up to the Bengal. You can have cargo in lots of small boxes or one huge one, and you don't need to put cargo containers on your ships. You could have a um, mortuary like medical base or um, manufacturing plants, stuff like that. Other ships can be carried as cargo as well, either fully assembled if you've got large enough space or in parts to be assembled later. Only some of the ships are going to be able to land on planets, and the Banu Merchantman is the largest ship that's going to be able to do that. This might make what it carries worth more 
or it, it will at least give you more choice in where you're able to sell them, as you don't have to sell them just in a space dock or station. You can also choose to land on the planet to sell them. It gives you more choice, and choice is good for a trader. The whole A and B will be able to land when they're fully loaded up as well on a planet. Whereas the rest of the Hull series would have to be in their retracted modes to be able to land on a planet, and therefore either carrying much less cargo or none at all. There's going to be different cargo interfaces and software available to you to look through and sell your cargo manifest. For example, the Hull series will have a progressively more and more feature-based software from the Hull A to the Hull E, because you need more features, because you've got more space and you're going to need to stack your cargo in such a way and take it out in such a way that is a lot more complicated than you would in a Hull A. It also looks like they're making apps for this too, that you might be able to run on your phone, and you might have to check your cargo, or offload it like that remotely. I think that's pretty cool. Even if you can just do it remotely from your Moby Glass, I do think that's pretty useful and pretty awesome. Cargo containers are built to interlock and stack, and cargo can be locked in place um, in a container or in a cargo hold with the cargo manifest menu. It's also held in place by powered locking plates, so you can turn these plates on and off. Um, well, you turn them off if you landed, I suppose, but you turn them on if you're flying around in space and you don't want your cargo spewing everywhere. Cargo containers will also have their own um, armor value and shielding too. So the hull series aren't going to be incredibly vulnerable. They're going to be able to jettison some cargo pods um, off if they're on fire or like they've got combustibles in that they're being shot at, stuff like that. Anyway guys, that was like a surface look at trade and transportation in the verse as I understand it at the moment and with the information we've been given. I'll put the link to the Cargo SCU Master List down in the description below as well for you to have a look at that. Please, if you've got any questions about um, how stuff works, what you want to be doing in the verse, all that sort of jazz, throw them at me because I'm interested in being a, sort of being a trader, although I'm going to be doing more mining, I suppose, in the verse. I will be doing a little bit of trading as well. Um, but I'm very interested in this kind of role at the moment and I've been doing lots of research onto it. So chat questions around. I'm interested. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help me. And I'll see you in the verse.